Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and i uh, got a few news points I want to share with you. Uh, and then I'm going to be jumping back over on Patreon. Uh, this will be our third video we've loaded here in the past week here. Got something I want to share with you. I think many of you will be blessed by uh, going into a testimonial uh, of, of something I totally forgot about, a vision I had many, many years ago. Uh, I wanted to share with you guys I thought you might find fascinating there. Uh, just really something kind of, kind of I would, look, I'll save it. You guys watch. I'm sure you'll enjoy it uh, without a doubt there. And uh, uh, of course, that one will probably end up airing on Israeli News Live. I, I am starting to do exclusive content over on Patreon now to where it's just uh, some things that I feel like that those that enjoy Patreon uh, can enjoy there and uh, but like I said anything that is vital anything biblical that is in very extremely important etc that will always be made available public to everyone uh, but Patreon is just a way for people to help support the broadcast so we do some little exclusive things there for our friends there and we want to thank you for being a part of that and thank you for those of you that do support our work and don't forget you can do that on israelinewslive.org or by our mailing address right above my head there. Uh, so anyway, uh, do be praying for our family. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're getting ready to release one of our first videos here coming up next week about things that have taken place that have happened to our family. Uh, it, it will go into the first half of uh, the tragedy that we have faced there and let you be the judge of things that have happened. Anyway, going right into this, Israel to sell tanks to the European country. Uh, Markov vehicles worth millions of shekels may replace NATO panzers sent to Ukraine. This coming out on RT News right here, it says there are two potential countries with which we are holding advanced negotiations. I am barred from naming them, but one is on the European continent, Yar Kulas, the head of the Israeli Defense Ministry Directorate for International Cooperation, told the finance outlet there. Well, that country, uh, according to uh, Hal Turner, is going to be Israel, excuse me, Ukraine. But uh, we don't know 100% for sure of that. We can't vet that ourselves. But I, I would say at the very minimum, Poland may be the country there. Poland has been getting a tremendous amount of military support from all over the world, NATO included. And I can certainly see why Israel would want to support Ukraine against Russia. Uh, that's considered, according us, uh, that would be a considered a stab in the back. But in a way, well, maybe it's not really a stab in the back if you really know what Putin is up to. Don't kid yourself. Remember, uh, as we have said to you before, uh, quoting to you here from Edward Hudos. This is uh, Edward Hudos here on the left, much younger version back in 1991 with Menachem Schneerson, the uh, the uh, famed Rebbe of the Chabad Lubavitch uh, organization there, who is believed to be the Mashiach or the Messiah, according to the organization's beliefs there. Uh, he was a very prominent rabbi uh, in um, uh, Kharkov over in Ukraine. He was also the uh, mayor there, and he is the one that has actually exposed exactly what uh, the plans were for Ukraine, Russia, the war. He brought this out, and everything he has said has been happening to the letter. Going to share that once again with you here in just a moment here. Continuing on, though, RT again reporting here, Kiev intends to kill as many as Russians as possible. Top Zelensky aide says... Uh, he says, there is only one plan, the most brutal advance with the maximum killing of Russians on this route. He said, noting that Kiev can't stop somewhere and say, all right, let's think and talk about something now. The only possible scenario for Ukraine is to reach its 1991 borders. He said, uh, back in May, uh, Podolek also proclaimed that his country hates Russia and those who represent it and vowed to persecute Russians always and everywhere. That followed comments by Kirill uh, Budanov, uh, he headed of Ukraine's military intelligence agency, who boasted that, he, that his agents had murdered Russians, public figures, and pledged that Kiev will keep killing Russians anywhere on the face of this world. My gosh. And, and you know, listen, and then you hear that, and then you have to remember, as I mentioned to you, Edward Hudos right here, right? What did Edward Hudos tell us? And of course, a Jewish rabbi, 
He did later in his 70s converted to Christianity, oddly enough. Uh, but he says here, published in the Volganda newspaper, uh, Slavianin, the Chabad Lubavitch Mas uh, Messiah Menachem and outlined his plans for destroying both Ukraine and Russia. The Slavs among them, Russians, are the most unbending people in the world. Slavs are unbending as a result of their psychological and intellectual abilities created by many generations of ancestors. It is impossible to alter these genes. Can you believe it? They want to alter the genes of the people. If you don't, in other words, if you can't, if you can't bend to the way they need you to bend, alter their genes. And if that doesn't work, then kill them, right? Slav Russian can be destroyed, but never conquered. That is why this seed is subject to liquidation and at first a sharp reduction in their numbers. First of all, we will divide the Slavic nations of 300 million, half of them Russians, into the small countries with weak and severed connections. For this, we will use our old method, divide and conquer. We will try to pit these countries against each other and suck them until civil wars for the sake of mutual destruction. The Ukrainians would think that they are fighting against the expansionists, Russia, and struggling for their independence. They will think that they have finally gained their freedom while they become fully subdued by us. The same will be thought by the Russians as though they defend their national interests to return uh, their lands illegally taken away from them and so on. So he goes, looking back in history, it must be admitted that these lands are the ancient ancestral lands of the Jewish Khazaria that is Israel captured by Kiev's uh, Rus, the ancient state of Russia with the capital in Kiev. In the 10th century, the Slavs are temporary guests on these lands and are subject to eviction. We will return this territory and build the great Khazaria, the Jewish state uh, on these fertile lands in the same way as 50 years ago, we created Israel squeezing the Palestinians out. There you have it. And again, who said that? That is said by uh, the former Lubavitch Rebbe, Menachem Mendel Schneerson, pictured right here to the right on there on the screen there, and to the left, Edward Hudos, who actually uh, revealed uh, that information to the entire world. He should be a household name. I mean, like I said, uh, sadly enough, it's very few Christians will ever truly uh, expose the evils that are going on in this world because if there if the evils that are happening happen to be uh, Jewish people they don't want to they, they're, they're afraid to touch that it ends up taking Jewish people people like Edward Hudos who is a former rabbi myself you know we were never raised Jewish we were just ethnically Jewish but the thing is is we wanted to wake up and recognize that there was an evil going on and then expose it now that doesn't mean Jewish people are evil by no means Jewish people are some wonderful people but there is a very demonic influence that is in the high ranks of uh, the religious order that control the political head uh, it is a multi-head serpent without a doubt. Uh, let's move on with our news here. Also, we have here Israel fears consequences of West arming Ukraine. Mm, wow, they fear arming, uh, the, you know, the West arming Ukraine has got some consequences, but yet they're willing to send over there 200 tanks to Ukraine to help fight against Russia. Wow, that's a hypocritical statement, right? Western weapons intended for Kiev's forces have reportedly ended up in Iran. Seems like Israeli News Live just may have said things like that, right? A little while back, nobody ever believed it, right? The Israeli military has seen signs that Western weapons have been smuggled from Ukraine to Iran and Israel Defense Forces commander told Newsweek on Thursday, Russia has repeatedly warned that arms sent to Ukraine will inevitably end up in being sold to the highest bidder. Boy, didn't we tell you about that corruption going on? That might have been on Patreon. I can't remember if we actually shared that. I think we shared that here too, though. But anyway, uh, yeah, the highest bidder. And that's exactly, remember Zelensky, one of the things that he did there, uh, we'd, we reported that a while back there through our intelligence sources there, is that they had taken down the Interior Ministry's helicopter over in Ukraine because he was going to expose Zelensky and the crooked deals and all the things that they were doing, selling off the weapons that the U.S. was sending into Ukraine, and that was ending up into the, the hands of the Turkish uh, government. So no doubt ends up into the Iranian hands as well. 
The anonymous Israeli commander said that the Javelin anti-tank missile launchers among the weapons that have been diverted to Iran primarily via the Black Sea and Mediterranean owned across across land. The commander claimed that the uh, paramilitary forces on both sides of the conflict, a term that uh, could include Ukrainian neo-Nazis and foreign volunteer units on one side of Donbass uh, militia units and the Wagner private military company on the other were taking part in the scheme. Goes on to say the other problem is that we are very worried that some of these capabilities are going to fall into Hezbollah and Hamas hands. Now, that also brings another thing to uh, our attention, something we've reported on before. I wanted to make sure we share that with you, remind you about that. How that, uh, and, and that, oh, that by the way, that is a, that is an exclusive over on Patreon. Uh, we were actually sharing some very de- in-depth insights uh, 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 from uh, a good friend of ours there that had uh, very intimate knowledge about uh, uh, Iran, the things that are going on, how the Iranian people would celebrate at the collapse of Iran, a war against Iran because they're sick and tired of the government. But at the same time, uh, that source also shared with us that Iran is afraid to attack Israel directly. Uh, in fact, they will arm Hamas, they will arm Hezbollah, they will harm, the, in the, of course, that's being Lebanon and also in the West Bank, uh, but they will not do the attack directly themselves. And here we have it. In fact, you got to see that video. It's a very good video there. Uh, Hezbollah, Hamas there. Exactly what it says there and that one there. And then oddly enough, we come over here to the uh, Al Gaminer. Iran's Khomeini calls West Bank major battleground against Israel. He says here, Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei on Wednesday called the West Bank a major battleground for the Palestinian factions against Israel. Gaza, Hamas, and Iran-backed Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror groups have long tried to increase their foothold in the West Bank. And his statement could indicate growing Iranian support for that. And again, Iran will always back those that are willing to lob bombs against Israel, but they won't do it themselves. They are terrified of the consequences, mainly because their own countrymen would also support a U.S.-led Israeli attack against Iran. That was something that even shocked me. I had no clue that that was really so, but it uh, undoubtedly is from what we were being told there. Uh, Another big issue here, too, I want to just play a little clip of this here from RT News there. Uh, This is RT. They're talking about the the power plant, the uh, Zupper, and I can never pronounce that right, Zupper Zile plant, nuclear power plant. It is constantly in danger of melting down. Uh, They finally got in the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Russians were able to bring in the inspectors there to see just how serious it is. Ukraine continues to use uh, small shelling and stuff against the plant, trying to hit the water pump. And uh, so let's listen in here just for a moment uh, to RT News. For the, for the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. I was able to see the cooling pond. I was able to see the contention at the retention gates, the canals and the inlets, which are constitute a system which is indispensable for the cooling function. So we can see, I I would say, there are two elements, basically. Uh On the one hand, Uh we can see that the the situation is serious, the consequences are there, and they are real. At the same time, there are measures that are uh, uh, being uh, taken to stabilize the situation. Now, this facility is another part of the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, but it's a little bit away from the plant itself. Now, this is uh, a pumping station for a uh, cooling pond that is used for uh, the spent uh, fuel of the nuclear uh, power station. As you can see, it is also constantly under shelling by the Ukrainian military. See, it's uh, full of shrapnel holes. Nevertheless, it is still in operation, and according to uh, officials, uh, the latest attack did not affect the work of this pumping station. Now, this is just uh, one of the pipes inside. So the power plant, of course, uh, definitely being targeted. And one of the things, if you remember, we reported in the past there that there there would be uh, if, for, for example, if Russia thought they were going to lose the war, they're willing to allow the plant to be melted down in order to create that no man's land in between uh, 
uh, Ukraine and NATO. But we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Listen, uh, two more things. We actually have a breaking story, breaking news coming out. The U.S. under a major cyber attack. Uh, something is happening. Uh, uh, in fact, I think I'll go to that before we come back here to Zelensky. We'll kind of close out with Zelensky here there. But let me see if I can find that for you real quick here. Y'all on Twitter here. CBS News is one of the uh, agencies reporting this cyber attack that has hit the United States there, many of the government agencies across the, the country there. If you recall, back several months back, we talked about how Russia had a malware uh, uh, embedded in our power grid structure. And this is not the power grid itself being hit right now, but they did have that, they have it embedded and it is so advanced, we've not been able to figure out how to get rid of it. But this time, the vulnerabilities are U.S. government agencies hit on a global cyber attack. Listen in. Good evening, Nora. A senior U.S. government official told reporters there is no evidence to date the U.S. military and intelligence agencies have been compromised, but a number of federal agencies have been hit. Tonight, senior government officials are racing to limit the impact of what one cyber expert is calling potentially the largest theft and extortion event in recent history. American targets include multiple federal agencies, including the Department of Energy, plus Johns Hopkins affiliated hospitals in Maryland and Florida, Georgia's statewide university system, and the Minnesota Department of Education. British Airways was also hit. Officials say the hackers are part of a cyber criminal gang called CLOP, believed to operate from inside Russia. They've started releasing some of the data that was stolen as part of their work to extort these companies. We strong. It also seems to me that one of the things that will be done from this is also to justify an attack on Russia. Uh, a direct NATO involvement. It's already there's some uh, information coming out that Biden is being strongly urged to let NATO take a more active role against Russia when it comes to Ukraine. And as we've already pointed out, all those tanks from Israel being sent over there. So it ought to get very interesting. But if you recall in one of our broadcasts that we did with, uh, with, with, with a, a, an economist friend of ours, he mentioned about the theater of war. He says how that, uh, you know, that expression is often used, a theater of war. And he said, if you think about it, a theater of war re requires actors. He said, in fact, that's exactly what we have on the stage. We have actors playing the parts, whether it be Putin playing it for America, Biden playing it for the United States. Well, it just so happens Zelensky actually got his award for acting. What do you know? And from none other than Sean Penn. Listen in. Now, this meeting here seeming to be very emotional and everything, but what's going to happen is Sean is going to pull out one of his Emmy Awards there to give to Zelensky. Uh, I think it's kind of fitting because, like I said, they're actors, what was shared on our program with our own, uh, one of our uh, Inside Intel people. Listen, watch what happens here. Very interesting. Oh, Pulls yes. it out. <laughs> no, please. That it is yours. No, I, I feel terrible outside. I just, it's just a symbolic, silly thing. Yes, but, but I, if okay. I know, but if I know this is here with you, then I'll, then I'll feel better and stronger mm -hmm. for the fight. It's so great, great to honor, but, yeah. but until we will. When you, when you win, bring it back to Malibu. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Because I'll feel okay. much better knowing there's a piece of me here. We have to be. Yes. The actors are now the getting the sweet. Emmy Award. So Sean Penn has awarded uh, Zelensky with the Emmy. So now you really know that it is true. It's a stage. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Don't forget, check it out. Check us out over on Patreon there. I hate to keep saying that there, but I think you're going to enjoy this video. Uh, it will be available for those that do want to watch it. Uh, I will be sharing this testimony here on Israeli News Live. And we're going to be talking about the Port St. Lucie nuclear power plant vision I saw of this place here many, many years ago, approximately about 35 years ago. And that vision came to pass. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.